to go next. If you'd like to see Liyue's tourist spots, I have a few references. Wow, everyone got here so early! The sun is shining bright today! <laughs> as soon as that leaf floats past Stonegate, we shall reveal today's poetry theme. The theme of the second day of the Neighboring Nations Congenial Poetry Gala is... Pairing Couplets! Pairing Couplets? Oh, I've heard of that. It's a Liyue art form where you have to create new lines of poetry based on fixed rules. Kind of like a fill-in-the-blanks game, but for poetry. Heaven and earth, rain and wind, the endless sky in the boundless land, forest boars and ocean shrimp, lavender melons and matsutake shrooms. Based on a given line of poetry, you must create the second line to form a pair or couplet. As long as you take inspiration from the wide world around you, you'll find it's not so difficult after all. The two lines should be neatly matched, complementing each other both semantically and rhythmically. In essence, it's just like most other forms of poetry. To buoy your imaginations and allow the winds of inspiration to fill your sails, we've added an additional component, an inspiration walk. An inspiration walk? By inspiration walk, we simply mean wandering around in the wild, taking in the scenery and pocketing any poetic thoughts. Of course, to all our friends, old and new, please be careful while out and about. Wong Sheng Funeral Parlor is already fully booked for the month ahead. And if there's any more demand, I'll be the only one with a smile on my face. In short, Please roam freely as the mood takes you. Enjoy the spectacular scenery of our two beautiful nations and fill your imaginations with the most pleasing of poetry. We will all reconvene here tonight. Traveler, can you round up Singcho, Chongyun, and the Mondstadt contingent? I have a favor to ask of you. Oh, is it that thing from yesterday? <laughs> Thanks. I'm counting on you. So, we hope that each of you can keep an eye out for this while you're out on your inspiration walk. Are you sure this is okay? It was just something I ran into, and now we're imposing my business on everyone else. Well, please don't say that, Mr. Chong Yoon. Master Jean ordered us to work with you however we can to improve cooperation. Helping each other out is exactly what we're here for. Besides, investigating any strange occurrences near Mondstadt and making a report to the Knights of Avonius is also part of our job. I don't mind either, because while we're out, I can look for new cocktail ingredients, too. <laughs> Just think of it like an outing with friends. It'll be fun! The way I see it, you should just humbly accept their willingness to help. All right. In that case, thank you all very much. I will be sure to repay your kindness someday. Now, how about we split into two groups for the day? Uh, you mean to cover more ground? Not just that. Don't forget, this is still part of the Poetry Gala. If we all see the same sights and sounds during our inspiration walk, how can we write unique poems? That's true. But how do we decide who goes in which group? Why don't we draw lots? <laughs> That'll make things even more fun! Drawing lots? But what if I end up with the Liyue crowd, and I can't think of anything to say to them? I've got the slips of paper here. Who wants to go first? Oh, Paimon! Paimon wants to go first! Okay, so that's the Traveler, Paimon, Diona, and Chongyun in one group, and Singcho, Mika, and Noel in the other. What a relief. Uh, at least I'll have Noel with me. Then I humbly place myself at your instruction. Oh, uh, I don't think... Uh, th that won't be... I also await your guidance. Take care, everyone. See you all tonight.
Did anyone forget to bring anything? If not, then let's get going! Dun, 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 dun. Come on! Wow. Are those ears and tail real? So fluffy. All right. Miss Diona, is there some place in particular you'd like to go? Just call me Diona. Since we're trying to find that thing you saw, why don't we start with the place you saw it last time? Sure. Then, everyone, follow me. Right over there, next to the water. That's where I saw it. But it was a little foggy at the time, so I didn't get a clear look. Uh, the view from here is great, but there's kind of a gloomy atmosphere around here. Is this the kind of place you like to take a walk? I wasn't taking a walk. I come here to train. Train? Like how knights train for combat? Um, it's a bit different. As an exorcist of Liyue, my training involves practicing techniques for the exorcism of evil spirits. Exorcism? I've always wanted to demonstrate the power of exorcism, but it's a pity. I've never actually gotten the chance. Chang Yun is one in a million! He has pure Yang spirit, so as soon as he gets close, evil spirits run and hide! Huh? Isn't that a good thing? It's awful. Have you ever heard of an exorcist that's never seen an evil spirit? A lot of people think I'm a fraud because of this condition of mine. Your physical constitution is far rarer than the technique still passed down by exorcists today. You should treasure it. Conqueror of demons. Is that a friend of yours? Yep, this is Xiao, an adeptus of Liyue! An adeptus? Wow. I've never seen one of those before. Uh, hello, Mr. Adeptus. Just call me Shao. So, are you here to train too? Are you out for an inspiration walk? When I heard about the exorcist's encounter, my suspicions were roused. That's why I'm here. I've already informed the owner of the inn. If you see anything out of the ordinary, return immediately and leave it to me. I... Oh, oh, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to drag even the Conqueror of Demons into this. I have already patrolled the area and found nothing amiss. Either the anomaly you encountered was no evil spirit, or perhaps it already left. I guess that means we came all this way for nothing. If there's no other business, I'll be taking my leave now. Mm. Yeah, you should come. There's no one else around here anyway, so you don't need to worry. But... I would also be honored if you joined us, Adeptus Xiao. It is a rare opportunity, and I have many questions about exercising evil spirits that I would like to ask you. <sighs> Fine. Seems like this Adeptus is pretty shy. Or maybe all the Adepti in Liyue are like this. Team Chang Yun has a new member! Yay! Wh what? When did this become my team? Now that Adeptus Xiao is joining us, if anyone's team leader, it should be... Don't overthink it! Uh, Diona, didn't you say you wanted to find some new ingredients? Yeah, 
I don't get to come to Liyue very often, so I want to gather some new ingredients while I'm here. I've heard that Liyue's Jueyun chilies can set your throat on fire. Is that true? <laughs> I'm gonna mix them into my drinks and give it a try! Uh-huh. Jueyun chilies? Um, I'm not sure that would taste very good. Really? Perfect! Let's go pick a whole bunch of them. What the... As well as Dweyun chilies, I also need some slime condensate or loach pearls. Are those really fit for human consumption? This is starting to sound like something Shangling would make. enough. Diona, you seem really committed to, uh, making alcoholic drinks available to people of all tastes. What? No, never! I hate alcohol! When grown-ups drink too much, they get that stupid drunk look on their faces, can't speak clearly, and don't even respond properly. Sometimes, they just sleep on the floor all night. Alcohol is the root of all kinds of evil. So, I'm on a mission to mix the most disgusting drink in the whole world and show everyone just how awful alcohol really is. Nothing can stand in my way. If it means coming out to Liyue every day to pick fresh Dweyun chilies, then so be it. Hmm. Um, is it really worth all that effort? Uh, yeah. Because all my previous efforts have failed. Those stinking booze hounds not only haven't woken up to the truth of how bad alcohol is, they even keep praising my drinks. It makes me furious! But uh, how is that possible? If this is the kind of stuff you're throwing into their drinks, it must taste absolutely vile, surely. <sighs> Are you calling me a liar? Well, if you don't believe me, I'll fix you a drink right now. Then you'll see. Uh, uh, no, no need. I... Uh... Huh, just you wait. Oh, no. Is she really going to add those Juyun chilies? If her claims are true, perhaps she too possesses a unique constitution of some kind. I don't see how it could have anything to do with her. Unless... She's under the influence of some kind of power? Maybe an evil spirit? No. I sense no trace of the demonic in her. Although there are traces of something else. Something rather special. In Liyue, we might say this child has adeptal affinity. It's ready. Here, I made one for Xiao too. Uh. Oh boy. Look at that color. Yep. She definitely added Juyun chilies. What's wrong? You're not allergic to anything, are you? Don't worry, there isn't even any alcohol in it. It's a slime condensate base with a seasoning of Juyun chilies and finished with frog legs. Surely there's no way this can possibly taste good. Oh. Uh. Xiao downed it in a single gulp. Oh, great. Uh, if the Conqueror of Demons drank it, uh, it'd be rude of me to refuse. Oh. Changyun drank his too! Uh, is he gonna be okay? This drink is... Delicious! 
It does have a touch of Ju Yun chili, but it isn't at all overpowering. It's completely different from Shangling's cooking or those drinks Sing Cho makes to mess with me. It's crisp and refreshing with just a hint of numbness, and the Ju Yun chili flavor combines with the smooth but not slimy texture of the frog legs to form a heavenly mixture. And oh, the slimes. Can we talk about the slimes? Before this, I never knew that they had such a pure and herby taste, like fresh grass after the rain. The power and purity of nature distilled into a cup. Amazing. Simply unbelievable. That's right. Slimes are absolutely sublime. Oh, I failed again. <sighs> but wait, what's gotten into Chong Yun? He's been so quiet up until now. I'm great, and I gotta try another. Diona, if you please, one more. I... Uh, oh, oh. Okay. I think I've calmed down a bit. Hmm. I'm sorry. Hmm. I can't believe I let you all see me like that. It's fine. My fault for not checking your spice tolerance first. Oh, looks like this Pure Yang spirit isn't such a great thing to have after all. Actually, before I drank it, I very much doubted what you said about your drinks. Uh. Huh, who'd have thought it? Diana and Chan Yun are actually kind of similar. Hmm? Xiao, what's wrong? Look over there. You mean the leaf? Something's written on it. What? You can see that from over here? Oh yeah, or it'll get swept away! There's a poem written on it. The Conqueror of Demons has truly amazing vision. The Paimancy! Hmm. It sounds like the author is writing about the first time they met their true love. Although, the following lines suggest that they didn't end up together. Why write a poem on a fallen leaf? The flowing waters are ruthless. They carry the leaves away with the current. This poem would likely have vanished into the void had we not found it. It makes no sense to me. That's true. I've heard Sing Cho say something similar before. When there's things that you're unable to say, or just never had the chance to say before it was too late, if it can be put on paper, it can be expressed as poetry. Is it kind of like wishing at a fountain? I used to do that sometimes when I was little. So, that means that our mystery poet was probably hoping that someone would read it, right? You think? Then, should we write a poem in reply? But we don't know who wrote it. How can we reply? Why not go upstream? Upstream? Why? The ink looks fresh. It can't have been written too long ago. This withered leaf floated down with the current. If we travel further upstream and drop a leaf into the same waters, it should be carried down past the original writer. Cool! Aw, this is so romantic! Communicating with a mystery person using poems on fallen leaves! But how do we make sure that they'll receive it? We can write extra copies and drop the leaves in different places. As they say, where there's a will, there's a way. Surely at least one of our leaves will find a path. Either way, it's our only option. Then let's make like a tree and head upstream! Upstream, upstream, up we 
things you never had the chance to say before it was too late. When silence is the final word, we mourn the loss of things unheard. I have little talent for, nor knowledge of poetry. At least in the water! Look, it's like a little boat! Merrily, merrily down the stream, life is but a dream. We should probably pick up the pace. We still have a few more leaves to set afloat, and we need to get back before it gets dark. Okay, let's go! Uh-huh. What's this? You two having a private chat? No, it's nothing. I just hope this isn't all in vain. The scenery here is quite beautiful. Let's pause here to seek some inspiration. Should we set up camp? Oh, please wait a moment. I'll pitch the tent. It's an inspiration walk. There's no need for all that. Okay. Well, I'll conduct reconnaissance nearby to ensure this area is safe and see if I can't scavenge any firewood or food while I'm at it. Wait, reconnaissance? It means survey the environment and plan a route forward. It's the foundation of all operations while out in the wild. Are all inspiration walks in Mondstadt this complicated? They're acting like this is completely normal. Am I the weirdo here? In that case, I'll conduct reconnaissance with Mika. Huh? Oh, okay then. Crumbs, now I have to try and make small talk. Should I mention the scenery? Uh, the weather? Very well! Then leave the camp to me! So, Sing Cho, uh... Do... Do you, um... Go on inspiration walks often? Or, or uh... I do. I always get bored when I'm cooped up at home. So, I head out for a stroll. Life gets busy. You have to steal a moment of leisure when you can. Cool. Uh, oh! Over there! Firewood! Yeah, my sword! Final warning! Rain outlines your fate! Let me weave you a burst. Mm. Let's keep going, team. With this wood and the food I brought along, we can definitely put together a decent lunch. You've got quite a knack at wilderness survival. I'll give you that. Thanks. I... I was on an expedition with the Grandmaster of the Knights of Favonius for a while, not too long ago. I was in charge of surveying and mapping. Oh? You sound like a character from an adventure novel. Charging across the world, sword in hand. What? Uh, no, I'm nowhere near as amazing as all that. If I really run into a powerful enemy, I always leave it for someone stronger to deal with. You're too modest, Mika. A hero is measured not by the blood on his sword, but by what's in his heart. As long as a righteous heart that yearns to aid others beats within your chest, no matter where you go or what you have achieved, you may be called a hero. That all sounded pretty profound. Oh, I've never even thought about any of that before. Hello? Are you okay? Maybe we should return, lest Noel be forced to wait on us. Oh, uh, sure. 
to act. But you're back! Did everything go smoothly? Do you need a cloth to wipe the sweat from your brow? No need, thanks. All clear. There's no danger in the vicinity. Noelle! Your cooking is amazing! Every single dish is so tasty! Truly astounding. I never imagined it was possible to enjoy such a satisfying meal in the great outdoors. Really? Then what do you usually eat when you're out on an inspiration walk? Oh, well, since I usually sneak out from home, I just grab some dried snacks to take with me. Add in whatever fruit I pick along the way, and that's my lunch. By sneaking out, you mean running away from home? That's right. Or sometimes I'll tell a cover story like, I'm going out to take care of business. But if you get caught, won't you get disciplined? So, just don't get caught. Huh. Hmm. Anyway, did anything interesting come up while you were out scouting? Well, Xing Cho and I talked about what it means to be a hero. Now that I think about it, by Xing Cho's definition, you should be considered a hero too, Noel. Huh? Me? You're always happy to help everyone in the Knights of Favonius. Not only that, but whenever we're out training, you help out the citizens of Mondstadt. Oh, remember that time when a giant boulder was blocking the road? You cut it in two with a single blow. Oh? Sounds like she has both a heroic spirit and incredible martial prowess. Don't. Oh, please don't praise me like that. We should talk about what we came here to do, finding inspiration. Miss Hu Tao said something about pocketing our poetic thoughts. Mm. But so far, all we've done is gather some firewood and cook lunch. Mm. I have no idea what to write. You can write about anything. Looking at Cor Lapis, one can't help but wonder if one's own heart is as bright and clear as Jade. Observing Silk, so bright and beautiful, one pauses to consider whether it ever feels the sadness and sorrow that humans do. So we have to connect our internal world with the external one? Exactly. But that's just one of many possible methods. Perhaps you might gaze out at the bridge in the distance and see a woman leaning on the railing, looking as if her heart is laden by sorrows that even the rushing waters below cannot wash away. Huh? Wait! I saw her at the gala yesterday. She wrote one of the riddles we answered. Why don't we go say hi? Hello, ma'am. How fortuitous it is that we meet again. Uh, hello! Are you here on your inspiration walk, too? Yes. Allow me to introduce ourselves. I am Xingqiu, and this is Noel and Mika. Thank you for accepting our answer to your riddle yesterday. Oh, don't mention it. It's all in good fun. I'm Kelly Roe. So, Miss Kelly Roe... Are you from Fontaine? That's right. I was traveling in the area and just happened to see there was a poetry event being held at Stone Gate. It looked fun, so I thought I'd drop in. Your riddle yesterday made quite an impression on me. It was uniquely evocative. Have you studied Liyue poetry before? I haven't, actually. I've just picked up a few things here and there from chatting with people throughout my travels. Amazing! 
So you're a natural poet. We noticed you standing on the bridge from quite some distance away. Are you drawing poetic inspiration from the flowing current beneath your feet? <laughs> I haven't finished my poem yet. The water here was just so peaceful and calming. I stopped for a moment and lost myself in admiring it. Well, since we're all here, why not head back with us to the venue for tonight's festivities? It's getting late after all. Huh? Are... are you sure? We can walk and talk. Perhaps the mingling of ideas will give rise to new inspiration. I'd personally like to hear Miss Callie Rowie's couplet. I'm sure I can learn something. <laughs> well, if you're all in agreement, I've got no reason not to join you. The first team is back, right on schedule. Huh? The others have yet to return? <laughs> Come on! Let's hurry! <sighs> we... Oh, oh, we're not too late, are we? Just how far did you all go? <laughs> Everyone catch your breath. Come on, deep breaths. One, two... Now, don't panic. The party hasn't started yet. <sighs> we made it! Oh, Paimon's exhausted. <sighs> Paimon gets tired if she has to fly too fast! Oh, not to mention dropping all those leaves. Paimon's hands are cramping up. Huh. Sounds like someone needs to exercise more. Huh? You guys picked up a new teammate while you were out? Indeed. This is Kelly Roe. I believe you'll remember her from yesterday, though you weren't introduced. Hi, everyone. Hello, but you're not the only ones who's called in reinforcements. <laughs> Look who we got! Wait. Chow? Where'd he go? Chow! <sighs> now that we've all regrouped, let's... Huh. Scratch that. Looks like we're still waiting on my co-host. <laughs> they say roosters crow at first light, and finches go to bed at night. But Director Hu Tao's always on the ball. Anytime, anywhere, she'll answer your call. Um, are the theatrics really necessary? We're already on day two of the festival. The opening ceremony is over. <laughs> but my dear, dear Paimon, it seems you are not yet aware. That was not for my own sake, but for a special guest who's joining us today. <laughs> Director whose manner is as exuberant as ever. It always makes quite an impression. <laughs> oh boy! Now this is a surprise. Mr. Zhongli. I hope you are well. Xingqiu, what can you tell me about Mr. Zhongli? He seems like somebody very important. Yes, he's held in very high regard in Liyue Harbor. He's extremely erudite in many different domains of knowledge. Allow me to introduce you all to Zhongli, a consultant at the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor. His expertise is limitless, stretching from the celestial orbs to the terrestrial ores, spanning modern and ancient culture, delving into literature both prosaic and poetic. He may be my subordinate, but he is certainly a qualified poetry expert, and so we have invited him here tonight to judge the compositions. The director exaggerates. I am but vaguely acquainted with a few lines of classical poetry. Should you consider me to be remiss in my appraisal of your own compositions, please correct me. Ah, yeah, enough with the modesty already. If I didn't know better, I'd say you seemed nervous. Just focus on judging. Please rest assured that I shall rise to the occasion, Director. Let me do a quick count. One, two, three, four. Great! Equal numbers on both sides. 
Huh? Are you counting me too? Okay, fine. But consider this a favor. Hmm, with our Fontaine friend present, perhaps we should rename this event to the Three Nations Congenial Poetry Gala. Also, I'm just noticing that Paimon should only count as a half teammate at most. Hmm, that kind of puts Team Traveler at a bit of a disadvantage. Well, how about this? I'll join in as well. Director Hutel, here to help out in your hour of greatest need. What does everyone think? Naturally, the more the merrier. Being the host of the festival shouldn't stop you from having the chance to enjoy it like the rest of us. Then, it's settled. Everyone else in the audience, feel free to join in too and support your favorite team. What about me? Shall I keep track of the score? No need for that. The teams are just a formality. We're all friends here, and this isn't intended to be competitive. But what do you think, Judge Zhongli? I concur, Director. Moreover, it would be disingenuous to impose upon our friends from Mondstadt and Fontaine a competition in which they are judged on how rigorously they can adhere to Leo poetic conventions. Since this is a congenial poetry gala, should we not begin with inspiration and finish with friendly conversation? The aim being for all participants to enjoy themselves. Oh, <sighs> that's a relief. I was so nervous about this, but it sounds like it's going to be pretty relaxed. Couldn't have asked for a better judge. Zhongli said everything I was supposed to say only far more eloquently. So, without further ado, I shall pass the baton to Venti. No problem. Friends old and new, put on your thinking caps and take a deep breath of fresh air. The second stage of our poetry gala will now commence. Matching couplets! Perhaps I could break the ice with a humble contribution to inspire others to share their brilliance. Please listen to the first line in the couplet. <clears throat> Lounging in luxury inside a Shinue kiosk booth delighting in countless contemporary tastes. What? He managed to think of one already? Oh, he seems like a real expert at this. Hmm, Shinue Kiosk. Should that be paired with Lily Pavilion? Or are they too similar for a couplet? Oh, this is pretty difficult. Shinue Kiosk. Contemporary tastes? Hmm. I guess I should pair the modernity of their VIP dining experience with an emblem of the past. Ah! Maybe where I was training that one time. That was quite ancient. The weather was terrible that day. Okay, I got something. Surrounded by history, outside a Tianghong Pass pavilion, as lightning sets the boundless tenebrous skies ablaze. Wow! Tianyun completed the couplet! Hmm. Xinyue Kiosk is a renowned modern restaurant, while the mountain pass of Tianhung is a prominent historical landmark. These two iconic locations form a complementary pair. The imagery also contrasts rather well between the two halves of the couplet, one half describing a leisurely and comfortable indoor scene, the other portraying a hazardous outdoor scenario where there is no protection from the elements. Huh? I was just describing what I experienced that day. <laughs> I guess I just got lucky. All right then. I guess I'll start the next couplet. Mind pines for Mingyun. Flesh confined to Qingse. Spirit striding high on Zhiyun's clouds. Oh, Changyun, you dark horse. Looks like you came to play today. This conjures the image of one with lofty aspirations, whose life is limited to a small town but who awaits the opportunity to one day ascend above the clouds. The use of various locations for their symbolism is quite novel indeed. Oh! Soul shines like jade stone, dressed in finest silkware, lucent heart still beats within me now. Wow, how did Noelle do that? A superb line. It employs the metaphor of precious stone to describe one of noble and moral character with a pure and clear heart. 
The symbolism in this case is centered around objects. Truly the work of a skilled poet. That was a commendable couplet. All thanks to your guidance while we were out on our inspiration walk. I'd like to start the next couplet. Up into the misty karst, down among the grassy marsh, all for lotus seed and bird egg soup. Lotus seed and bird egg soup? What is it, Diona? Did you think of a second line for the couplet? No. Everyone's poems are so complicated. I need more time just to understand them. But when I heard lotus seed and bird egg soup, it made me think of berry and mint first. Maybe because I mixed a similar drink recently. <laughs> North beyond the Starfell Lake, south across the windswept plains, just for berries squeezed and mint infused. No wonder everyone praises the traveler so highly. You answered so quickly. Both halves of this couplet require intimate knowledge of the terrain in question and the local plants that may be found there. The two of you are clearly both seasoned travelers. Does this mean I helped? Hey now, Zhongli. Don't just praise everything you hear. You should question and press them a bit. Don't worry about upsetting anyone. After all, I'm here to take the heat. Then allow me to try another. Qingxin has no heart. Still, it soothes the human heart. Is she talking about the medicinal effects of Qingxin? Hmm. <sighs> this is a hard one to match. Sweet dream is no dream, yet it nurtures people's dreams. Sweet dream... does that really match? Hmm... Since the suitability of the match has been queried, I shall act according to the director's wishes and ask you, what is the link between sweet dream and Qingxin? <laughs> uh... before bed will make you sleep well, right? <gasps> You're amazing! <laughs> then I agree. The two halves of the couplet match. This point is well deserved. Points for me, points for thee. This judge gives out points for free. But if you ask me, everyone's being a little too conventional so far. Let's push the envelope a little. Go nuts! Oh? In that case, why don't you finish this one for me, Hu Tao? Round moon in the heavens, full moon at night. Celebrate with circle of friends. Hmm. Oh, square meals in the basement. Big bowls of rice, decorate with cuboids of meat. Huh? W what the? Ah, we have ourselves a pedant's couplet. The two halves have no thematic connection, yet each word has its perfect parallel, meaning the two halves do form a cohesive whole. The strict pairings make this no easier to achieve than a thematically coherent couplet. Blah, 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 blah. So verbose. Zhongli, just tell me if I got a point or not. Of course you did. I presumed it went without saying. Ahem. <clears throat> Through Cheongji, I walked a hundred miles. At Guili, I ended my march. In Dihua, the silver grass grows in two styles, but horsetails don't trot out the marsh. From vendors, I bought some fifteen steaks. At dinner, I sizzled the lots. At pressure, the tenderloin cooks in two ticks, but fifteen won't fit in the pot. Huh? So that's a pedant's couplet. Pana thinks she can do that, too. I thought of one. Wolf hooks can't hook there and bunny. Aw, that's a cute couplet. 
chocolate. Sweet flowers can't out-sweet Sister Barbara. Huh? <laughs> now, that's the passion we like to see! Although, unfortunately, your response was technically one word too long. Hmm... In that case, Whopper Flowers can't whop Jumpy Dumpty. Oh, this monster's got talents. Whew. I'm so relieved. I at least managed to get one. Hmm. Nestling by a roaring fire, scent of tea wafts from the stove, reading through the heart of clear springs. <sighs> wow, Noelle came up with another one! Come on, match the couplet! Paimon knows you can do it! Uh, do you really think Paimon has what it takes? Give it a whirl. Nestling by a roaring fire, scent of tea wafts from the stove, reading through the heart of clear springs. Hmm. Uh, seething in the pouring rain, sword of pain swipes at my foe, beating up the eye of the storm. What? Really? Yes, very good. The image of challenging powerful foes in the harshest of conditions seemed to manifest before my eyes, and it was perfectly juxtaposed against the atmosphere of leisurely reading with a cup of freshly brewed tea. Really? <laughs> Maybe Paimon has a knack for this after all. <laughs> It appears that my services as a judge are no longer needed. Woohoo! Paimon's so happy! Paimon managed to match a bunch of couplets at the end. You did hear them all, right? I really enjoyed myself, too. Oh, I never knew Leo's couplet poetry was so much fun. You were amazing today, Noelle! You had so many couplets! Paimon especially liked your one about reading Heart of Clear Springs. Paimon never could have thought of that! <sighs> Miss Kelly Roy, are you okay? You look like you're getting tired. Uh, don't worry, I'm fine. Thanks for asking. Although, I do have a question I'd like to ask. Have all of you read Heart of Clear Springs? I haven't actually read it. My dad told me this story once. It's about a spring fairy and a young boy. Oh yes, the story of a spring fairy who left her homeland and met a boy under the moonlight in a faraway land. The boy poured out his heart to her, and she listened to his stories. Over time, the boy grew up and began to develop feelings for the Spring Fairy. But the Spring Fairy didn't understand human love and was afraid that making a promise to him would ultimately end in tragedy. And so, um... Ooh, I don't know if Diana's father mentioned the part about the kiss to her. In the end, the Spring Fairy left the boy and was never heard from again. Oh, yes, that's it. Many years went by and the boy became an old man, but he never stopped believing that the fairy was real and not just a dream. Sounds like a tragic tale. So, what do you guys think of the Spring Fairy in the story? I'm sure she made her decision with the best of intentions, but the boy couldn't hope to understand why she left. It's a shame that the misunderstanding never got cleared up. Well, do you think she should go back and see that boy again, if she ever had another chance? Now? But isn't he an old man by the end of the story? Hmm. 
Isn't it a bit late? What if it just led to more regrets? Oh, sorry. No, oh, maybe I'm being too pessimistic. If Paimon was that boy, hmm. Actually, Paimon would definitely want to see the Spring Fairy again, no matter how old Paimon got. After all, she's the love of his life, right? I see. Oh, <laughs> looks like the party's still going strong over here. Are you coming up with more couplets? Need my help? Stick to hosting, Tone Deaf Bard. If you get involved, you only match every couplet yourself and not leave any for the rest of us. <laughs> I never knew you had such a high opinion of my abilities, Paimon. But the couplet games are all over now. Tomorrow's theme is freestyle poetry. Do we have to share our own poems with everyone? That's right. If you're not feeling confident, don't worry. It's never too late to register for Venti's Poetry Cram class. I'll sign up. Oh, me too. Hold on there, Buster. Before you start peddling your classes, just how much freedom is there with this freestyle poetry exactly? Aren't there any requirements at all? It's as free as the winds that blow. And there's nothing freer. There are no limits to genre, form, content, or anything else. So long as it comes from the heart, you're welcome to put it into poetry. Give it a try. There's no better chance to express your innermost thoughts. Whoa, that's almost too much freedom. Paimon can't decide which way to go. Our travels, or maybe all the food that the travelers cooked for Paimon. Will you come too, Kelly Roy? Paimon wants to see what you write. Oh, um, yes. I'll be there. Ugh. Ugh. My nose is starting to itch again. All right, I shall leave you to privately ponder your poems and bid you all good night. See you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs>